Hello and welcome to worship on this eighth Sunday in the season of Pentecost. Yeah, you're right. I lost track last week. I thought we were on the sixth when it was really the seventh. So today is the eighth Sunday in the season of Pentecost. And it is the 18th of July, 21st, 2021 as we worship with Nobleton and Schomburg United Churches. And it's good that you are here. I pray that something within this worship service will speak to you with comfort, will speak to you with challenge, and will speak to you so that you know that you are indeed a beloved child of God no matter what might be happening in your own life right now. So thank you for worshiping here today. May you be blessed. We begin our worship service with a call to worship. What will we build this day? A place where God can reside? What will we build this day? A space where Christ will renew us? What will we build this day? Opportunities for the Holy Spirit to move within us? Well, let us build moments, connections, and a right relationship with the Holy, with each other, and with all of creation. Let us worship God. If you have your candle, now is the time to light it. God's home is more than just a building that we call the church. God's home is within you. So as you light your candle, know that Christ's love is burning within you, shining into the lives of all you meet. May we shine brightly so God's home may be within them as well. the light of Christ. Thanks be to God. Please join with me as we pray. God of aliens and strangers, make the doors of our churches wide enough so that all may find a welcome, a home, a haven, a heart. Christ of the near and those who are far off, Make our hearts wide enough so that all might find a place in this household of faith. Welcoming spirit of saints and sinners, open our arms wide enough so that all, the guest, the neighbor, the child, the widow, the politician, the homeless, the brother, the sister, the sibling, may be embraced by your love and grace. God in community, holy in one, open your arms wide enough to enfold us in your heart. Amen. Prayer for Illumination. Please pray with me as we prepare to hear the scripture readings for us today. Eternal God, open our minds to hear your words, our hearts to hear your words, and our lives to be obedient to your word. Through the power of your spirit and the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Scripture background. It seems everywhere we look these days, there is so much home construction. Humanity has always wanted to build. Even King David was part of this culture, but the home he wanted to build was not for himself, but for God. Or was it? I am reading from 2 Samuel chapter 7 verses 1 to 13 and am reading from the New Revised Standard Version. Now the king was settled in his house, and the Lord had given him rest with, from all his enemies around him. The king said to the prophet Nathan, See, now I am living in the house of cedar, but the ark of God stays in a tent. Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. 
But that same night, the words of the Lord came to Nathan, Go and tell my servant David. Thus said the Lord, Are you the one to build me a house to live in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day. But I have been moving about in a tent and a tabernacle. Whenever I have moved about among all the people of Israel, I <clears throat> did ever speak a word with any of the tribal leaders of Israel, whom I command to shepherd my people Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now therefore thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep to the prince over all people of Israel, and I have been with you wherever you went, and have cut off all your enemies from before you, and I will make you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth, and I will appoint a place for my people, Israel, and will plant them, so they may live in their own place and be disturbed no more. Evildoers shall afflict them no more as formerly. From the time that I appointed judges over my people, Israel, and I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house. When your days are fulfilled and you lie down with your ancestors, I will rise up your offspring after you, who shall come forth from your body, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. Scripture background. In today's gospel, reading, we hear how the disciples <clears throat> and Jesus try to get away for a bit of rest and reflection, but the crowds still find them with their needs. What are your needs this day? From him. I am reading from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 6, verses 30 to 34, and then verses 53 to 56. And again, I am reading from the Revised Standard Version of the Bible. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away to a deserted place <clears throat> all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in a boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As he went ashore, he saw great crowds, and he had compassion for them because they were like sheep without a shepherd, and he began to teach them many things. While they were crossed over, they came to the land of Genserat and mooted the boat, moored the boat. When they got out, out of the boat, people at once recognized him and rushed about. What a whole region began to bring back the sick on mats and to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went into the villages or cities or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplace and begged him that they might touch even the fraud fringe of his cloak. And all who touched it were healed. These are the words of life, and through faith become the living word. Thanks be to God. Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth, the meditations of all of our hearts, be acceptable in your sight, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Have you ever um, thought about the churches that you have worshipped in throughout your life? Did you ever worship when you were on vacation? We do. <laughs> I love checking out different churches, whether they're big or small or somewhere in between. I believe one of my favorite churches is the Catholic Church, the Basilica in Assisi, and it's the Basilica for St. Francis of Assisi.
I got to uh, worship there while on vacation and it was all in Italian. It was Catholic, but I loved it. It was a very powerful moment for me to be present. And even though I didn't know the words, it didn't really matter. It was being in that place that was so powerful. Another place, sort of the complete opposite of that, is the uh, Baptist Church, Church of the Compassionate God in Awachapan, El Salvador. And this uh, community uh, started in a home and now has grown and grown and grown. So hopefully the photo that you've seen was from around uh, 1999, 2000. And as you can see, the sanctuary is just filled with all those molded plastic chairs and a very small table. But it was here where I was invited to preside at their first ever communion service inside that particular building. It was a great honor, but that story is for another sermon, another time. Each of those churches, as well as so many others that hopefully you're even thinking about, had the Holy Spirit within them. Each church had a ministry. And in the first reading today, we heard how David is now living in this wonderful palace made of cedar, but he wants to build a permanent home for the Ark of the Covenant that's been in a tent. And he wants to do that as a way of thanking God uh, for all that has happened in his life. He wants to thank God and to take God out of the tent. He wants God to have style, to be in the limelight. David wants to keep all that he has, though, but wants to raise God up. Well, as you know, God had a bit of a different idea. And I think it is very important to remember that we cannot contain God in a box, in a tent, or even in a grand temple. We figure we have the best building to keep God in, but you know what? That's not really where God resides, is it? It doesn't matter if the stained glass is the most elegant and beautiful, or that the wood has a beautiful stain to it, or that it's the best Steinway grand piano or a big pipe organ. That's not what brings God there. Now the individuals who created those things, they contain a glimpse of God. And the people who sit on the pews, like you, you contain a glimpse of God. Remember, God said that out of David would a whole people arise. The house of David, though, would not be a house made of wood, concrete, glass, or shingles. It would be a house of flesh, bones, sinew, ligaments, blood, tissue. It would be a living house. And this house of David would restore the people. Now, since I've been reading this passage as I was preparing for the worship service and creating the sermon, all of a sudden it dawned on me, we're in the midst of COVID. Hopefully getting closer to the end of it. But do you realize that we have not been in the church building since March 15th, 2020. That's one year, four months, and three days. So, has church stopped? No, it hasn't. It's adapted. It's changed. 
It's different. Has the ministry stopped? No, it's changed. It's different. It adapted. But we have continued to be Christ's hands, his feet, his eyes, his voice, and his heart. I remember when church buildings were being closed and the fear was, well, pff, that's it. We're done with church. It's over. Church was done. But then we heard that when the building is closed, the church gets taken to the streets, to the people. So I want to share a bit of what our moderator, the Right Reverend Dr. Richard Bott, wrote on March 13, 2020. Quote, It's important to remember, church doesn't close. Ever. We may need to temporarily stop face-to-face, -face, full on passing of the peace, communion by intinction, and offering of the plates. But the church, the body of Christ, is a 24, 7, 365 or 66 if it's leap year, reality. It's lived around the world as well as in our own homes. It acts when our hearts reach out. It keeps going wherever there is one disciple of Jesus, or two or three, living the way that we've been taught." End quote. I believe Richard has created some very powerful words. Do you remember the old children's poem or action song, I guess? Here's the church, here's the steeple, open the door, and there's all the people. Except now I think it's probably more like, here's the church, here's the steeple, open the door, where's all the people? Well, let me tell you, I'm going to let you know where the people are. The people are out in the community being the church. Schaumburg United is still doing their seniors lunch, although now they're delivering the meals. We had an amazing nativity drive through Nobleton United had an incredible foodless food drive. And Nobleton United also sponsored lunch for the food for the workers at the vaccination clinic. You are being the church. How incredible is that? You know, I, th I believe that sometimes the church, too often, that building has created walls. Not walls for rooms, but walls of division, walls of superiority, walls of hatred. In the Gospel reading, we see again how Jesus does his ministry in a most amazing temple, right among the people. The temple was built for worship, for study, and for the gathering of the people. But Jesus understands and knows that worship of God is not confined to the temple. I mean, he's already performed miracles and teachings, and then he sent the disciples out two by two. And in a section of the Gospel of Mark of chapter 6 that we don't hear, there was the feeding of a great many people. Ministry was happening among the people. And so now Jesus is having a time out. <laughs> he needs some R&R. And it's not that he doesn't care about the people, but he now needs to spend some time in the presence of God. He needs to rest in God's arms, in God's heart. But the space where he's in and the space where the people are in is kind of flexible because it continues to move among the people. So they start to search for Jesus because they had need in their hearts. 
and Jesus' compassion overcame his need to rest in God's arms because through his ministry, he was indeed resting in God's heart. And the people were facing a very difficult time. The Romans had taken over the land. Injustice was everywhere. The future was uncertain. Poverty was always a possibility. There was hunger, there was illness, and there was death. And they were afraid. A Catholic priest whose sermon I have heard on this passage, Father Michael Renninger, pastor with St. Mary's Catholic Church in Richmond, Virginia, asked in his sermon, what did the people do when they were angry or afraid or worried? Well, apparently they asked two questions. One, where's Jesus? And two, how can we get to him really quickly? They were focused on Jesus, centered on him, bringing all their cares and worries to Jesus. And when they did that, they found peace. No, not peace in that everything was done and delivered and there, were, there was nothing to worry about anymore. There still was. But by bringing their concerns, their anxiety, even their joys, they found peace. I believe that's the message God wants us to hear from the Gospel of Mark today. Think about all the news that you watch, whether it's CBC, CNN, Fox, or whatever. We, we see so much of it. And we read too many inflammatory posts on Facebook. I don't do Twitter, but I sure hear that there's some angry tweets going on. And when that happens, we tend to get tense and angry and ooh, really upset. And so we end up wanting to lash out and to maybe say something or tweet something that uh, we probably shouldn't. We get overwhelmed by the news of the fires that seem to be burning out of control in BC and California and other places in the world. And then we hear about the political leaders who are either assassinated or put in jail. And then there's a new variant with COVID and more deaths. When all of that happens and we get worried and anxious. We need to do what the people following Jesus did. Ask those two questions. Where's Jesus and how am I going to get to him really quickly? <laughs> I believe we need to uh, pray a little more and not rest in that worry and end up pouting. Maybe we need to listen. We need to be still. We need to let God speak first. If we don't ask Christ what we should be doing, then whatever we do do is probably going to be misguided. And if we do not focus on Christ, all we're going to see will be our fears, our ang anxiousness, our worry, our angers, and none of that will bring you or me any kind of peace. So let's reach out to that fringe on Jesus' garment so that we can become the living church filled with compassion, forgiveness, openness, and wonder. Thanks be to God. And all God's people said, Amen. And here's a few announcements for us.
Please pray with me as we bring before God our joys, our concerns, our sorrows, and our hopes. Let us pray. God, you are bigger than anything any of us might imagine. So thank you that in your bigness, you have welcomed each one of us into the home of your heart, your love, your grace, and your forgiveness. We are astounded at times that you want us to be in your presence and how you grace us with gifts beyond imagination. Thank you for our families, even when they do drive us to distraction, for we know they too are our home. Thank you for our friends, our colleagues, our neighbors, for they also are our home as we learn work and play together. Thank you for our faith communities, for they are our home where we are able to spend quiet time in reflection, in prayer, and even more noisier times when we're able to sing and share meals, when we laugh and support. We pray for this planet we call home that seems to be ripped apart right now, there is much hatred and distrust of each other, of governments, of those who appear different even though at heart we truly are all the same. There is fear of what will be next in Haiti, what violence is going, on, going to happen in South Africa, and how we will live into right relationship with our indigenous siblings, and how the voices of the Cuban people will be heard. We fear what is happening with fires once again burning out of control in B.C. and California. Guide those making decisions and those looking after the fires and those whose homes and communities have been destroyed. We pray for those who are without homes for whatever reason. Help us not to judge but to hold in prayer and in love. We thank you for the opportunities you place in our path to be your light of welcome, of hope, of acceptance, of encouragement. And we thank you for those who have been, still are, and those who will be your light for us as we journey through unknown times as faith communities. We pray all these things and more in the name of Jesus the Christ, who taught us to say as a family and community, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now may we all go to greet the stranger and the dear friend equally, sharing God's steadfast love as we seek to live in faithfulness. Now go, sharing Christ's compassion with everyone, tearing down those walls that divide as we build up those bridges of hope. Now go, to live as one in the Spirit, as the Holy Spirit gathers you with others, building communities that welcome all, especially the outsiders. And may the peace of God, the love of Jesus, and the power of the Holy Spirit rest with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Well, thank you so much for being here today and worshiping with me. I'll see you next week in person, sort of. We're going to do a Zoom worship instead. So remember, worship will be at 11 a.m., but we'll probably be on around quarter to 11. So if you want to come early and have a bit of chit-chat with others, or even stay after the worship and have some chit-chat, that would be great. And don't forget, it's communion, so bring some bread and some juice. But in the meantime, stay safe. Stay healthy, stay hope-filled. Bye. Be blessed.